Hello, this is a Bluetooth style 4A grand piano, 160 centimetres long, that's 5 foot 3 inches long, made in 1927. They've just come into stock, so just looking at it to see sort of what sort of work we might need to do to improve it, also to appreciate the piano. Now it's got ivory keys, um, there are a few chips in them, so if we look at that, uh, you can see, now, my colleague, uh, technician is very enthusiastic about the piano as I am too and is thinking about trying to improve the ivories so if we do that and go down that road this just want to note we can certainly improve the or disguise pretty well the the chips there but the, the, the cracks here which appear on the front of the keys we can't do too much with so um, if you want them replaced we certainly do that too that's uh, about a day's work plus the cost of the the key tops um, something we're regularly doing and we're changing ivory quite a lot these days because uh, certainly for export it's very difficult for export ivories. Um, looking around the rest of the casework we can see that it's not in incredible condition. My colleague polishers certainly can tidy it up very respectively uh, or we can repolish the whole piano so that's a decision if you're watching this video and you're interested in the piano you can decide what you'd like done. Um, it's a musician's piano, so obviously it's op option opportunity to buy a musician's piano at less than what it would normally cost. And this is one of the very best small grand pianos that's ever been made. Looking around the whole case, there's so the top here, for instance, you can see that's been kept open. Um, and if you look underneath here, you can see what the original was. So that was the original ebonized finish, and uh, it's really dried out a lot. So we'll certainly be able to, to improve it and match it in a lot better than it is now. So that's the option, whichever you'd like done, repolished or just matching it in, making it good. This side is very good, actually. So uh, that's, if that's the exposed side for you, then that would be fine. Um, you can touch in a few blemishes on there. Looking at the inside of the piano here, um, this has been restrung in about 1978, I would say. We'll show you why I think that in a minute. Um, the soundboard, I think, has been refinished. It's, it's, that's actually the paint on the top of it. There's no cracks in the soundboard. But I want you to see everything if you're watching the video, in case you can't come in. You can always try the piano out, as we've mentioned before, if you're interested in it. Um, so we'll clean it up, obviously. And the soundboard is, 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 as I say, pretty perfect. And these are very good strings, as you'll hear when we tr play the piano. That's been restrung. The tuning pins are very tight. You can tell it's been restrung, partly because the tuning pins are larger than the original blue and the ones were. Um, it, 1977 plus, it was done at that period, I think. They actually have coloured, discoloured quite a lot because I think the piano's just been neglected for a long time. Um, but it hasn't been played very much, so that's on, on the positive side. But let's have a quick listen to the tone of it here. So in the mid treble, where you put the main melody areas. It sings beautifully. And the tenor area. Now around this, the break point is very well balanced, so, or very, very well integrated, I should say. Very similar sounds, so a sign of a good piano maker, as we've mentioned many times before. Now, for a 160 centimetres long piano, that's an exceptional bass. The dampers are rising correctly with the pedal and the wedges, as we mentioned before, they, they clear the strings nicely but don't go too high. And uh, played, played with the key, there's, the, there's not a bounce back on the, on the damper here onto the fingers. So everything's well regulated already. And in fact, if we look at the, set, the less off, the set off, that's very well regulated too. So it's going very close to the string and then letting off. And the drop screw's very well adjusted too, so it's stopping near the string. Now the hammers have been replaced and a clue to when the restoration was done as well is this date here and that's a Renner date stamp uh, 1972 uh, we, we think it is could be 77 but we're pretty sure it's 1972 uh, that's a typical date stamp for Renner um, so that means it was restored sometime after that time I would say looking at the string colour that's probably about right in fact I'm surprised actually that uh, the strings have got so, so dirty during that time so obviously they the piano needs cleaning and so on so that's not really a problem but um, let's look at the hammers here 
Now, you can see this from me wet, being somewhere, but looking at the right-hand pedal too, very, very little wear, um, and uh, they just they seem to either light refacing or just voicing. It sounds excellent as it is. The other thing I notice is that the, the springs need regulating. So if we look at the spring here, if we look at this hammer, as I take my finger off the key, that one goes up. I've, I've regulated that one. So as I take my finger, the back check releases, and that one goes up. If I do the one next to it, it doesn't go up. So it's uh, obviously a better for repetition and, and stops it from failing because sometimes the spring's very weak, it doesn't work at all. Now a lot of Bluthner actions have a screw here as do Beckstein's where you can adjust a different style of spring. Well this spring is a bit like the style of the Steinway spring and you have to have a tool like this which has a little slot in it so you can grab the spring and pull it out like this and then hopefully you can get it right if you bend it and adjust it. It's better to have the screw because you can be be more clear with this one you'd have to try and error a bit at least I do anyway if you're good at adjusting these please let me know um, and just clip it back in and hopefully it works now so now it's lifting it up as it is just a slight upward movement whereas before it was like the one next to it which goes straight down I'll just put this one up so you can see the one next to it going straight down as I press it and it doesn't go up at all straight down so there should be an upward movement like this when I lift the slightly the key, the back check. I release the back check here and um, it goes upwards and that's correct regulation. Not too hard, fast, otherwise you feel it in your finger, but enough to make sure it's positively up and then it repeats better and won't fail either. Uh, this hammer rail here is a bit on the high side, I think, because even after I've adjusted these, uh, they, we've taken them from about 51 to 47 centimetres from the string, which is correct. Uh, and even so, it's not very far off the hammer rail, so that could go down a little bit more. It really should be a gap between the hammer rail and the and the hammer. Just um, that's that's that, then it's it's it, it's the minimum noise it makes. Then the key regulation is good too. There's very little sideways play, so there's been a lot of work done on the piano. We certainly need to do some refinement, but a lot of things we won't need to work on. There's very little wear on the pedals. You can see someone's put some paper under there. Perhaps it was a bit noisy, they used some felt. Now that's something we obviously would do. I wanted to mention that the backstay on the, uh, what they call the backstay on, on the pedals here, which is used, it's, it's essential really on most grands for stopping the pedals move backwards when you press the pedal down, um, is attached to the piano on Blutners. So if you look at, the, look at it up here, you can see it's actually attached there, which means when you take the pedals off, this, is a, this remains attached, which is an obvious thing to do, I think, because th this, this swings back up and lodges itself up there and stops it getting lost. So, so often you get backstays lost on grand pianos, and we have to make them. It's very common to have to make the backstay. Um, but if it's attached, as Blutners do, then that's very, very helpful. Now looking at the workshop, I think I cov covered most of this, so a lot of the regulation is good already it just needs refinement lubrication i didn't mention the keys need lubricating the the touches you see if i pull that up it should go straight down um, and that one too so that'll alter the touch slightly to make it lighter and we might want to lighten it more so we've said many times 52 grams 50 grams is the normal in there and 48 grams in the top but different pianists like different touch weights as we mentioned recently i've read a book um, uh, by Franz Moore that talks about Horowitz liking a very light touch and Rubinstein liking a heavy touch. So depending on what you like, we'd normally set it at 40, 52, 50 and 48. It means a lot to have the touch and then even it out to have the touch accurately. Uh, 41 up weight, when that, go down, when that goes down to say 52, that'll reduce that because 41 is a little bit on the heavy side. So um, I've mentioned that many times and reweighing the action and repairing or replacing the key tops, depending on what you'd like, really. Um, obviously, this is a, could be a, a budget price piano for a musician, and I really do recommend it. Um, just a comment here, the, the, this is called the 4A, which is 160 centimetres long. The, the Model 4 is much more common, 150, made from about 1926 to 1939. Um, and after the war, after the factory burnt down 1942, they weren't, weren't anything like the same. That's, uh, they're some of the best small grand pianos ever made. Only about one in five are 160 centimetres. I checked that with statistics. So um, the, this is the one we're always extremely grateful to get in. I just want to contrast the t or compare the tone of this with other grand pianos that we have in stock. Mm -hmm. 
This is a Blithen Star 5 that's 5 foot 9 inches long, made in 1912. And the Bechstein Model M is 1964 and it's 100 and sorry, it's 5 foot 9 inches long, sorry, 5 foot 10. So that's a Bluetooth Star 4A, 160 centimetres long, 5 foot 3 inches long, longer than the Star 4, which is more common, that's 4 foot 11 inches long. So we're always very pleased to get these in. It's a clear tone wherever you play it. And very sensitive on the action. Of course, we'll be refining it as much as we can. It's already playing beautifully. been tuned at all so it's just come in like this and it's below pitch so it's slightly out of tune sorry about that but I think it sounds reasonable it's kept well in tune with itself which is a sign of a good piano it's a real musician's piano and if you are a musician and, and want to study on it, it would be really suitable for, start, go for at least 30 years before any major work needs doing, such as hammers. Even down the bottom bass, sounds very clear. Now if you're interested in the piano, please do write to us, info at robertspianos.com. Um, write to us saying what you'd like to do. There's alternatives here. The key tops could be replaced um, or we could try and improve them. Um, my colleague who's a technician helping with the video would like to try and improve them, likes to keep ivories as much as we can, which is uh, what we'd like to do. But increasingly we have to change them, especially for exports. Casework, of course, um, this looks really good and original, but it's been exposed. Obviously, it's definitely the worst for wear. But my colleague, the polisher, will be able to tidy it up and make it good, um, so it's respectable. You can repolish the whole piano, obviously. So, thank you very much for listening. Please let us know what you'd like to do.